with a 2J crew. It's your girl Jasmine. I'm back with another video. It's been a while since I posted, but I'm back and we're going to have episode three of the Grad Chat video series. And I'll be talking to you about the step by step process to applying for a PhD in 2020. And also I'll be dropping some tips and hints and all the other good stuff. So make sure you stay tuned. So you have to excuse me, the lighting is kind of weird because the sun is setting and I was trying to use all of the natural lights, but it's okay, bear with me. So I use a rainbow on, on, on about all the other random stuff, but today I wanna make sure I cut right to the chase because it, I don't wanna make it like a super long video and I wanna give you guys just the direct steps and yeah. Congratulations, you decided to apply for a PhD. Woo, woo, woo. That in itself is a great accomplishment. A lot of people don't even think about it. So, so you've already made that decision. So now comes the actual application part. And the PhD application process can be very taxing if you don't know a lot about the application or at grad school already. And if you're doing it on your own, it can get really overwhelming and it can become very hard and very taxing mentally. So I'm going to give you tips that will set you up in the beginning of the process that will help you make better decisions and help you condense the time and the workload and all of that good stuff. So step one, the very first thing that I did and the first thing that I think everyone should probably do or at least consider doing when starting your PhD application search, uh, school search, I mean, all that stuff, the first thing you need to consider, think about, ask yourself, what are what are the non-negotiables and what are things that are flexible for you? So what I mean by this is more um, social or environmental things. So for me, I in the beginning, I told myself I'm not going to live anywhere that's cold, anywhere that snows because I'm from Florida. I lived in Taiwan before. I don't do cold climates, but I did apply to one school that was my read school, it's, which ironically is the school I'm going to, that was the coldest place that I could have ever chosen. So because it was my number one school, because I got in, I'm going there. But that was the thing I was flexible with. I was flexible with it being this particular program, this particular school, because I really wanted to go there. So I got in, so I decided to go there. But think about how close you wanna to be to your family, if that is something that's very important to you. If you don't wanna move out of state, out of country, some people do international PhDs, think about things like that. And also, is the program funded? Are you willing to do unfunded PhD or postural funding until you can get some more in coming years? another thing to think about and also think about about do you care where you live like do you want to live in a big city do you want to live in a small town and things like that because i believe that you should be in a place that you'll be happy you'll thrive and you'll have things to do things to care about things to enjoy outside of your studies because it is a long process and you should also enjoy the process in the meantime so think about your family your friends what you want to do and also if it's relevant to your research so if you're researching certain certain things you may not be able to be in other places you know what i mean so those are things to think about as what i mean by non-negotiables and flexibles so after you figure that stuff out, that should help you narrow your schools. The second thing to do, which is probably one of like the most tedious parts of all of this is to research your schools, the programs, and your mentors. So this seems very abstracty. So I'm gonna try and break that down for you. So after you figure out things you wanna do, places you wanna go, it should cancel out some, some aspects for you. If it doesn't, that's okay. So after you know that, information what you want to do is go ahead and look for a school a program and a mentor so how i went about this is i knew i wanted to be in psychology i knew i wanted to be in this um in a certain area certain field i wanted to do certain things i want to have be able to hit certain goals as far as my career and research wise so what i did was i went on and googled top programs top phd programs in psychology so then from there i was like oh these are the top schools this is what they focus on this and another so that kind of gave me a broad understanding so after that i was able to learn about different programs so from there i was able to tell what schools had certain types of research that they did in this area do this 
you or you're able to find exactly what you're looking for and find a program that caters to your needs and then from there you're able to look for a mentor so this again is probably the most tedious process because you want to make sure that you hit all the areas that you're interested in step three. Oh, that's 33 but step three so this step I feel like can be very controversial which I have no idea why it's controversial people feel like they shouldn't do it but a hundred percent do it so this step for me was reaching out to people I was interested in working with and this I feel like is a non-negotiable like you have to talk to people that you want to work with because how else are you going to know if they're accepting students if they're even doing the same type of research if they're on sabbatical this fall if they're no longer taking students if they're retiring like how else are you going to know these things if you don't ask ask them so for me it was very important it was a game changer for me this is how i feel like i got into majority of the schools i got into because i had that connection with people i reached out ahead of time this was i reached out to people anywhere from like a year to like five six months before i applied to talk to them to have these conversations because it was so early that we had time to zoom talk on the phone to um, email back and forth and for them to get to know me so i could also feel them out is this a person that i can see myself working with are they supportive of my goals or what type of mentor style they have like th these are things to ask so for me number three is definitely reaching out to people you're interested in working with there's no limits to how many we can email there's no limit to anything like that like there's no like social thing that's like oh like i shouldn't email them because they're busy because they're a professor no you need to email them because you need to know if they're taking students and you need to know if you'll like them and all the other things I've said so definitely reach out to all the people you're interested in working with so after you have figured out your non-negotiables your flexibles after you've done your research after you've emailed people this is the time to get organized so step four is to create a excel sheet or some type of web form, to-do list, whatever it is, whatever works for you, whatever you need to create to keep track of things. You want to create something to keep track of the schools and all the information that goes with it. This is so important and it will be so handy later on in the later steps that I'll talk about later on. Um, and it will help you be more efficient and it will help you help others that you're also working with and talking to. So for me, I created an Excel sheet and in this Excel sheet, I had the school that I was applying to, the program I was applying to, and the faculty I was applying to. In addition to all this like basic stuff, I had information about their funding. Do they have internal funding? Do they have external funding? Do, do they fully, fully or partially fund their grad students? These are things that are very important to know. And then in addition to that, I also had information about the GRE. Are they, do they require the GRE? What is the GRE code? And then um, their application process. What do they require from their students? Um, is it a personal statement? Is it a research statement? Is it a diversity statement? What type of stuff do they need from you? And then how many le letters of recommendation do they require from you? And also their address and when their application is due. So these are just a few, not a few, I guess, but these are things that you wanna have on this Excel sheet so that you're able to keep track. And um, if I remember, I'll make sure I share a screenshot of my Excel sheet. Maybe that'll be helpful to you guys. Maybe I can create a template if it's something that people are interested in, but um, I will try and show you what mine look like. But an Excel sheet with just all of the basic information in one place so that you have to go back and forth, um, their school code, their Jerry code, address, all that stuff will be really important and help you be super efficient with all the stuff that you have to keep up with with, this, with all of the applications. So after you have done all of that, step five is to schedule your GRE. And I say schedule, not take. You want to make sure you schedule your GRE at least four, five, six months before you take it, or at least have an idea if you don't schedule it that early. Have an idea of when you're going to take it. And I say this because you want to give yourself enough time to study for GRE. And this all is a part of planning ahead. So for me, I started studying for the GRE in June and I was taking it in um, the middle of August, which is not that long of a time. So I probably should have studied more, but I knew myself like, I, I only know, <laughs> if I don't know it, I don't know it. So in June, I was like, okay, boom, boom, boom. I looked at the test dates, availability, location, whatever, whatever. and 
I had scheduled my GRE for the middle of August. And I'll explain to you in a little bit why I did it in the middle of August before classes started. But you wanna schedule your GRE, you wanna think ahead, you wanna start having a study plan of how you're going to do the whole study thing along with all the other things you have to do. So this is all the summer before you apply. So if this is, if you're watching this later on, you can still do these steps, but this is what I did. So after you have scheduled your GRE, you're going to start working on your personal statement. So this is arguably one of the most important documents that they will see because in, you'll realize that all this prep is just for a few items. And this is probably the most important item. This is, and for some applications, the only thing that a school will see about you, the only thing that they will know about you. This is the only thing that they really have to go on from your perspective. This is you writing to them, you saying you want to go to this because of this, you saying I feel like I could be a great contribution to this program because of this. I want to do this for society and this is a school I want to help me get there. All that stuff you can only say in your personal statement. They don't call you and ask you, oh, like, how do you feel about this and this? And who do you want to work with? They don't say all that. You can only show that through your personal statement unless there's an interview. That's a different scenario. But so you want to make sure you take a lot of time on your personal statement and a good rule of thumb is having at least three other people read your personal statement and preferably people who are in academia people who teach te people who are grad students whatever it may be but you could also have your parents your peers whoever you can get to read it you want to make sure that it is proofread that there's no mistakes that it makes sense that you're being concise and that you are speaking how yourself in a way that will show off your best asset. So at this point, you probably have already taken the GRE, you may need to retake it, whatever it may be. But the next step is to begin the application. So applications open usually in like October, well, probably like October, but sometimes they open earlier, early or to mid September. So at this point, you should be going on to all the different portals for the, all the different schools and programs and making your accounts and starting to look at all the things that um, you need to do and all the places that you have to send your um, jury scores to and your transcripts and all the other forms that you need. And this is where Excel comes in handy again because all of these places you're gonna have a username and a password. So then you can go ahead and boop, drop it right in your Excel and keep that in track, keep track of that with all of your other information because trust me, it's gonna get confusing. You're not gonna remember if your computer saves everything that's good, but if it doesn't, or if you're somewhere else when you're doing the application, then you're gonna, it's gonna be a hot mess. So make sure you make, keep your usernames and passwords with all the other information from the school. At this point, you wanna make sure you keep up and um, you stay in contact with your your letter writers and things like that and then comes the time to submit to your application so after all of this this whole long process you've you prepared yourself you've done everything you've you know make sure you got all the right info all the writers are um, informations are sent in your personal statement's all good it's been read it's sent in boom hit submit <laughs> that's is basically all you have to do <laughs> for real though that is all the steps that I took to prepare and submit to my actual PhD applications and it's a really long process but you can definitely get through it so I really hope that you found me the step-to-step -step guides to be helpful and that it will make your application process a little bit easier and um, you find it useful so that is all I have for you guys today. If you have any other questions, make sure you drop them down below. And, <laughs> okay, that was weird. But anyway, so that is all. Make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe button, share my videos with all your friends who are applying to PhDs or any grad schools right now. And I will see you all next time on Life with 